like to okay hello everyone we have started the recording well dear participants welcome to may 2021 ipd week and we are in uh, in technical session cisco modeling labs version 2 deep dive at the uh, cisco networking academy ipd week before we start and before i pass the presenter ball over to our today's speaker i would like to share with you a couple of um, thoughts about uh, Cisco Modeling Labs, CML, and why we are doing this session. So, if you may, re you may remember that in February, uh, which was like this year, of course, February this year, in the past IPD week, uh, we did have a couple of sessions presented uh, by our uh, speaker, the same speaker, Alexander Gorbachev, that is with us today. He did present a session network infrastructure as a code on February 24th, and he also presented another session streaming telemetry for network infrastructure on February 25th. In both of these sessions, we used CML as the part of the lab, of the, uh, as the part of the lab demo. And uh, if you haven't seen those sessions, I, I would advise you to go to the uh, February IPD week content in the IPD week class, and you can review those sessions. We have recording and materials posted. Then we thought uh, we were discussing uh, with the presenter. We were reviewing the feedback about these sessions and uh, you guys asked us very much in your feedback to have another session dedicated to CML as a tool. And we decided, okay, why don't we create another session explaining you about the CML, what it is, how it works, and different things about it. Uh, so that uh, is kind of uh, where the idea arrived from uh, to, to make this session. But again, I would like to mention a couple of uh, NetaCAD related uh, thoughts before we actually proceed to the CML session. First of all, uh, look at this table that you currently see on the screen. Kristen, do, do we see the table? Am I presenting actually? No, let me give you the can ball you, really can quick. You, can you pass yeah, me the ball, go. please? Yeah, All right. Because, yeah, I didn't have the ball. Sorry, excuse me. So um, hopefully <laughs> it's good that I actually checked it. <laughs> so uh, you can see the uh, table where we compare different options for Networking Academy the way different ways how you can practice um, hands-on skills with your students and uh, as you probably well <laughs> most aware and you better uh, you know better than us the option number one that we do always recommend is to have a physical cisco equipment in your class uh, it's probably the best option uh, historically this option was always there it uh, we do have uh, promotional offers of discounts for about 70 to 80% of the general price list uh, to purchase the equipment for networking academies. Uh, this option actually gives your students the best hands-on experience uh, ever possible. And this is the option we always recommend as the option number one. It's a little bit less scalable because you uh, depend on the amount of real physical equipment. Uh, but the good side that once you purchase the equipment, you can use it for a number of years, uh, normally up for about five to seven, sometimes even more. And uh, you, it doesn't have any fees every year. So you purchase it once and you use it for many years, rotating the equipment over the labs with your students, and then you can go. Of course, we also have Packet Tracer, which is free. The uh, It's a great tool you can simulate you can uh, visualize things you can collaborate you can do assessments with that tool it's a fantastic tool for learning and for teaching it's absolutely free however it doesn't work exactly as the real equipment because it simulates things it makes uh, you see what you have to see but it doesn't really act uh, on the on the background it doesn't really act as the real equipment we always we also has the have the option of uh, the uh, NDG, which is a partner company which uh, provides and produces the NetLab server, which is a uh, software and a physical server that can give you the remote access to the to the Cisco equipment that you already have in in your lab. If you would like to make this equipment remotely accessible, in this case you will have to set up your NetLab server, which is uh, 
which means to purchase that server, you will have to purchase annually uh, a license for this server. And of course, that Cisco hardware itself uh, that you would connect to that um, remote uh, remote access server of NetLab, which is, this option is also uh, one of the recommended options for networking academies that uh, enables you the remote access for your equipment and is really a uh, great thing to use in the environment of teaching and learning. It has instructor access, student access, and a lot of things that uh, uh, helps and facilitate teaching process for the instructor. These three options, uh, that's actually the list. So all other possible options that exi could exist in the world, and probably you can guess the, the options I'm uh, referring here, I will not call the names, uh, all other options are not really officially supported nor recommended. It could have some teaching, learning um, issues, legal issues or compatibility considerations why we cannot recommend those options, including CML. For today, uh, unfortunately, we cannot recommend CML for use uh, in Cisco Networking Academy because uh, our lab manuals are not designed to be used with CML. We have no discount, unfortunately, for CML at this point. And CML generally was not designed as the uh, for the environment of teaching and learning with many students in a group. Uh, it was not designed for that. It is designed for advanced level uh, study, self-study, maybe testing, maybe prototyping, uh, for self-learners, for advanced studies, for engineers, for technical staff who is experimenting with the networks. The great thing of CML is that it is an emulator, which means it it really works as the equipment would as a virtualized equipment uh, on the on the backstage. So it uses real IOS, real operating systems, and it really uh, currently we cannot position that tool as it's it, it doesn't really suit the best for uh, classical use for a uh, big number of students within the environment of networking academy. So because of that, currently we don't uh, officially support CML. We don't provide network networking academy discounts or promotions to purchase uh, CML. You can purchase it uh, on your own. Uh, feel free to do that. And probably for uh, your advanced studies or maybe for even for your students who are doing CCNP or at least uh, something beyond CCNA, it would be a good idea to recommend students to use the CML as a tool. Uh, however, uh, it could be different lab setup comparing to what we have in Networking Academy instructor manuals, and uh, it can have different other uh, differences or maybe even issues. Not speaking, of course, about the uh, hardware and physical requirements for CML because this product uh, requires uh, a lot of hardware resources to, to, to run because all of the virtual stuff that is running behind the CML uh, consumes a lot of memory and processor and uh, other hardware resources. I just wanted to explain that to, to have it really, really, really clear. We are not positioning CML uh, to be used or to be recommended to use uh, within Cisco Networking Academy, but we are doing this session for your guys professional development that you know about this option, that if you would like to decide to purchase that for your advanced studies, that you already know uh, how it's working. With that, uh, with that little uh, corporate disclaimer, <laughs> let me pass all the ball over to Alexander and uh, let me make uh, Alexander you the presenter. Uh, and let's kick off the session of Cisco Modeling Lab. Uh, Alexander is our instructor, instructor trainer, and the partner from Russia. And as I already mentioned, uh, he has done two brilliant sessions in February. And this is let's decide. Let's say it's a continuation of that journey. Over to you. All right. Uh, can you hear me? Can you see uh, my screen? Absolutely. Perfect. Uh, give me just a couple of seconds. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. All right. Yeah. Okay. I've got the all panels. So, um, thank you, Samyon. Hi, everyone. Welcome on board. So, once we've done with the, <laughs> I would call it um, NetAcad corporate propaganda. <laughs> so, we can move to our um, session topic, which is deep dive into uh, the Cisco Modeling Labs version two. And uh, let's get acquainted first. Once again, my name is the Alexander Gorbachev. 
I am from Western Siberia, and I'm really tightly related with the Cisco Networking Academy for a long time. And uh, consequently, my professional background is primarily IT integration and IT outsourcing. And currently, I'm doing some business in the uh, field of IT education consulting. So, uh, during this session today, we will talk a little bit about why it's important to know about modern tools, which are helping IT engineers to manage a modern IT infrastructure, and um, which role uh, Cisco Modern Labs is playing in this agility tool chest framework. Uh, we will um, also make a brief overview um, of the CML as a product itself, uh, which reference platforms it supports, um, where it can be deployed, and uh, what are the licensing options. And uh, I think the major part of this session is the demonstration of some CML advanced capabilities and how it can support some automation scenarios. Um, all right, so let's start with the notion of the agility tool chest, which actually was invented by Hank Preston, who is the network programmability evangelist at the Cisco DevNet. Uh, it's really obvious that the modern IT infrastructure um, challenges require some modern tools and solutions from some different categories. Uh, of course, to meet the modern business objective. So, as you can see, here is the um, infrastructure simulation platforms category, which is our primary focus for today. And if we will uncover these categories, um, we can see that there are a lot of tools which enable us to keep our infrastructure automated and proactive as possible. Uh, here we can see the CML uh, is one of the options for infrastructure simulation platforms, along, uh, along with the other uh, tools which you're most likely familiar with. And as we know, these exact tools are heavily used for uh, vendor exam preparations, including Cisco certifications. Uh, but today, uh, we are more in the context of the production infrastructure challenges which often requires some sort of sandbox uh, to test new features, operating systems, network topologies, CI, CD pipelines, as well as the integration with some custom logic using uh, a Python, for example. So even we still use the real equipment and maybe the packet tracer for the education purposes, our students uh, really must be familiar with this set of tools before they will start their career in the field of IT infrastructure engineering. So moving to the product overview, here's a couple of um, deployment options that we have. So first and foremost is on-premises deployment option. So since the CML is actually a CentOS 8 virtual machine, you can deploy it on your PC if it's sufficiently powerful, of course, or um, use any virtualization infrastructure if you have one. Uh, the bare metal installation option came out recently as well. If you, um, for example, have a powerful server, but you don't have any VMware licenses, you can install CML controller right on top of the server without any additional hypervisor. And the second option is a bit tricky, uh, but yes, if you don't own any powerful infrastructure, you can run CML controller in public cloud. And uh, as of today, we know that it can be done using GCP or uh, AWS. Um, no success with the Microsoft Azure so far. Uh, and to make it work, you need manually convert and import CML virtual machine to your public cloud account, uh, whether it's AWS or GCP. So unfortunately, at the moment, um, the CML is not available on the uh, marketplace for any of these um, cloud providers. Uh, here are some licensing options available for the CML. Uh, long story short, we have an option just for personal use, which you can purchase by yourself at learningnetwork.cisco.com. 
And other two options are either enterprise uh, are for enterprises or training providers. So these types uh, of licenses must be purchased through the Cisco partners, just the same way you purchase any equipment or any other software licenses from Cisco. And the difference between the last two options is that enterprise license uh, lets you create unlimited number of users inside the controller, but the number of uh, virtual nodes across all users are limited according to your license count. And educational license works sort of backwards. Uh, so every user can run unlimited number of virtual nodes, but the number of users is limited according to your um, license count. Uh, a couple of words regarding the reference platforms, which are shipped along with the uh, CML controller. So here we have some sort of standard classical iOS V and iOS V uh, L2 for switches. We have CSR 1000 V platform, which runs iOS XE, and uh, the same operating system uh, for the current hardware series like uh, ISR uh, 4K or Catalyst uh, 3650. Uh, some data center grade Nexus switches uh, running NX OS, uh, as well as the IS iOS XRV for high capacity advanced services routers. Also a couple of utility appliances like T-Rex traffic generator and uh, wide area network simulator. Uh, variety of uh, Linux flavors, virtual machines, and basically you can import any virtual machine, any virtual appliance that you would like to have in your lab, uh, because under the hood, CML uses the KVM virtualization mechanics. So in general, any KVM um, compatible virtual machine should perfectly run inside the CML environment. Uh, short legal notice, uh, all these reference platforms images are the part of the Cisco Modern Labs and there is no legal way, I would repeat that, no legal way to use any of these images inside any other um, infrastructure simulation platform like EVNG or GNF3. So this is just to um, keep you informed, okay? And with that, we are ready for some demo. And here we will take a look at some advanced capabilities like um, packet captures, simulation of loosey links between the devices, um, how the console uh, multiplexing is working inside the CML, some remote access capabilities using the breakout tool and how we can import a third party virtual appliance, which is not part, uh, which is not a part of the standard platforms list. Um, we will also touch the CML API and we'll test the Python SDK library to see how easy we can automate an infrastructure modeling process. And with that, let me switch to my development virtual machine. So, and here we go straight to the um, CML. So this CML instance is deployed um, using my on-premises virtualization cluster uh, using the VMware. Uh, really uh, the very basic um, CML license, which is personal one. So on the dashboard, we can see uh, that there are a couple of labs that I created recently. Uh, none of the labs are turned on at the moment. And here we have uh, some indicators, uh, which is the CPU load, the memory, the disk space, and we actually can see the, the overall status of our um, CML controller. Um, here we have a couple of buttons, so we can actually easily um, add the um, empty lab if we want, or we can actually import the lab. So let me delete this one. And uh, recently, just recently, um, I started to um, read this CCNP curriculum, and there is a lot of uh, nice labs, which I was trying to um, sort of um, 
transfer to the CML. And actually, if we will open the um, end of these labs, let's say the OSPF2, uh, OSPF version 2. So this is the, the actual lab from the um, Network Academy curriculum. So some of these labs can be transferred as Siemion just said. So it's it's not uh, officially supported, uh, but if you doing the study by yourself, so you can actually um, transfer some of the labs to the CML environment. And this is how it looks actually. All CML labs, uh, they have the YAML format. So if we will open like, for example, the same lab, we can actually see uh, the nice and clear representation of uh, the, the same lab in YAML markup language. So uh, we, here we can have some initial configuration for the devices, uh, the refer reference platform images that we would like to use in the lab. And the rest is actually the topology information. So which um, interfaces are used uh, and basically this is the links topology. So let's try to um, import this lab into the, uh, the CML. So let me close this one. So this is, yeah, um, 912. So as you can see, the, the, the import status is um, successful. So we can actually go to the lab. So this is how it looks inside the CML um, working area. So here we have the, the set of devices. As I just uh, mentioned, you actually can have some pre-configuration of the devices if you would like. Um, some basic configuration which is um, required in the lab description. And um, so actually we can uh, start any device individually. So you can see the small um, palette, small menu here. So we can start either um, any device individually or we can actually start the, the whole lab at the same time using the um, start lab button. So as you can see, um, there is a small indication uh, which means the device is currently booting. And we actually can go and uh, check the notes tab and see that which devices are actually started and which devices are queued. So this is done uh, for some sort of CPU optimization, because if all the devices will start simultaneously, um, the CPU will throttle and it will take a long time to boot the lab. So um, while our devices are um, starting, here on the left, we have actually the, the pallet with our devices, which are available uh, with the standard CML. And uh, there is a couple of uh, devices that I imported by myself. So uh, we actually can go and check the boot process of each device. So let me close that. Um, if we go to like, let's say R2, we have the uh, serial console built in right inside the um, HTML5 client. So we just open in the console and we actually can see the boot process. So once device um, finish the boot process, so we will be able to work with the device um, right inside the browser. Let's open the couple of the more consoles. So as you can see, the PC1 and PC3 have a separate green indicator, meaning that these devices are actually booted. And if, and if uh, we go to the console and click uh, sort of enter, so we can see the login prompt. So meaning these devices are actually booted. Um, the switches are booted as well. 
Okay. And the routers should boot just in a couple of seconds. All right. We also have uh, some additional panels uh, when we clicking on each device. Uh, here is the connectivity tab where we can actually see um, which interfaces of this device connected to which interfaces uh, to the other devices. Um, and here we actually can see the same information and we can remove the link if we need so. So let's go back to the console. And um, let's, for example, uh, configure the IP addresses on the interfaces between R1 and R2. So this is the interface gig 00. Right, doing the same on the other side. We will just ensure that we have initial connectivity between the devices. And yes, we do. So, and next thing that I want to show you is the some packet capture capabilities. So, if we will click to the link, so you can see um, so that that we selected this exact link. So it turned um, a bit blue, and on the link, we actually have um, the packet capture capability, and here we can start the capture, we can clear the capture, we can download the results of the packet capture in the PCAP format that they usually we use for the Wireshark, for example. And here we have some settings. So we can uh, configure the maximum number of packets that we want to capture or the maximum time that we want to start the capture. Uh, some templates that we usually configure um, using the Wireshark. Um, so here are the templates and here we can specify um, our own template. So let's make it, um, leave it default and just start the capture. And currently it's waiting for packets. So we will go back to the R1 and do the thing once again. And then we will back to the link for the packet capture. And we can see here our ICMP packets that we just, mm, sent from R1 to R2. And right here, if we click on the packet, we can actually see the packet details just the same way um, we do it in Wireshark. And if we will download this result of this packet capture, so you can see this is the pickup format. I can actually save it and I actually can try to open it, but I don't have the Wireshark installed on this machine. But you got the idea, I hope. And another nice feature is the link condition simulation. So here we can um, configure the bandwidth for this link or the latency jitter, or we even can simulate the some person of the packet loss. Also, we can actually see the some statistics on the link, uh, the number of packets or number of bytes. All right, let me, um, so for example, if we will return back to the R1, so we can actually see that the uh, the round trip average is from um, 12 to 10 milliseconds here. And if we will go back to this link and let's say make it 100 milliseconds latency, all right? And we will go back to R1 and do the ping once again. So here you can see that we have the round trip uh, twice of the latency that we just configured. And like, for example, we can even make, um, let's say 10% of the packet 
uh, should be lost on the link. So, and if we will try to make this ping again, for example, repeat it, um, let's say 20 times. So you see, we starting to lose some packets. And this is really a nice feature of the CML because if you have um, some sort of really big uh, distributed infrastructure with a lot of, uh, you know, VPNs uh, and routing protocols over these VPNs, it's really, um, it's really nice to have an ability to simulate the link conditions because um, not all the internet providers work on, you know, fiber optics. So in my personal case, uh, I had some installations um, where a lot of, uh, let's say, branch offices was behind some uh, radio internet connection and really have challenges to design the DMVPN topologies and checking a lot of the routing protocol, the timers, so it's it's really have to have this sort of uh, modeling instruments when it comes to the real production. All right. Um, so next, I think we can talk a little bit about the access to the lab devices. So as you can see, uh, the first and foremost option is to use um, HTML5 uh, in browser console to access the devices. So what is the other option? So we actually have uh, a built-in console server inside the CML, which we can access um, using the SSH. So if, we, if I will open the terminal, and if I will go and connect to the uh, CML controller using the regular SSH. So let's see how it looks. So here we have the CML2 console server. And it actually give us some uh, short tips how we can uh, connect to the devices. So we can actually uh, write help and we can see that there is not a lot of options, right? So we can um, list all the labs that are currently running. Uh, we can list uh, all the devices uh, with uh, all console parts in all the labs which are running right now. So let's write uh, the labs. So we can see that the, the only lab uh, which is running is the R lab that we just imported. Here's the title. Uh, we can actually make it a little bit shorter. Right. Do refresh. All right. Um, and we can do the list. So if we write the list, we have um, here's our lab ID. Uh, inside the, each lab, uh, we have how many? I mean, in the inside this lab. So we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven devices. And all of them are currently here from zero to six. Here's the labels. So our title is um, still long. So it's overlaps with the uh, node labels. And so let's say we want to connect to the same Air One console. So which is the node number one. So, and we simply do open we can actually use tab, so it supports tabbing. Uh, since we have the only lab uh, currently running, and we can even use the arrows to navigate the um, devices and the console. So which one we should select is node number one. Is that correct? Yeah, node number one. And by default, uh, there are two serial consoles on each device, but by default, we actually need to connect to the console number zero. All right, so we connected to the terminal server and if we hit enter, we can actually see the um, R1 prompt. And you can mention that I opened this session using the console server uh, over the SSH and here is the our in-browser console. 
and the input output is multiplexed. So meaning if we will write something in here, we have the same input output in here or in any console that we open uh, from anywhere else, right? The same way it works, uh, it works backwards. So if I, yeah, okay, so it looks better. If I will um, write or type something here, we can see that the same output uh, populated our uh, console connection over the terminal server. And this is the really nice feature if you're actually uh, working with the team. So the, the, the console connections are shared. So meaning multiple people can use the same, the same exact uh, serial console if they need to. Um, another really nice tool uh, for the remote access, if you have this um, sort of request, uh, is to use the breakout tool. So let me access from this um, terminal server. So if you will go to the tools, you can mention there is the breakout tool. So what is the breakout tool? So this is the actually a built-in capability to access the um, lab nodes if your CML controller is uh, somewhere far away from you, right? And you don't have to use any, let's say, um, VPN tunnels or, or something. So everything is working over the HTTPS connection. So basically this is the uh, utility which you um, downloading to your local PC. So you run it, you configure the base connection to the um, your CML controller and after uh, you are able to connect uh, to the devices of, on your labs uh, using the um, local host connection. So uh, let's actually try it out. So here we have, uh, here we have some uh, distributions for Linux, for Mac OS and for Windows. In my case, I'm using Linux, so I will download it, uh, the breakout tool for Linux. All right. so. Let's check it. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, so actually it's downloaded. So what I need to do is to add the execution flag to it. So if we will try to execute this breakout tool, so it give us um, a couple of uh, a couple of suggestions how we can actually initialize. The, the work of this tool. So, and first of all, we have to create the default configuration uh, with the config flag. You can see that default config written to the config.yaml. And after that, we can actually start the user interface with the UI flag. Okay, so you can see that it's actually running and we can go to the, the local host. And here we can configure how we can reach the CML controller. So this is the very default configuration. So in my case, uh, this is should be 10, 0, 1 and 1 and 13. So we don't verify the TLS certificate. And we have obviously different username and password. So here you can configure um, from which number the console port uh, will be started on the uh, your local host using the breakout tool. It's the same for the VNC connections. Uh, you can actually change the listen address for this um, breakout tool UI. So let's make it uh, IPv4, for example. Uh, the port and the lab's file name. So this is for the internal breakout tool uh, configuration. So here we can save it. 
So the configuration is now safe. Um, let me reconnect using the IPv4 local host. So uh, we actually now can uh, retrieve the information from our uh, CML controller and check which labs we actually have at the moment. So here we see our um, lab that we just imported. And if we will click on it, so let me make it full screen. We can actually see uh, which nodes we have inside our labs. So according to the uh, node labels. And here we can see the links, how we can access console ports of these nodes. As I just told you, by default, um, the nodes have uh, two serial ports. And the second serial part is um, turned off in the breakout tool by default because um, no special cases to use it. And we actually can uh, go and turn on the, uh, the breakout tool for this exact lab. So once we do this, let's make it half screen again. And now, uh, we can actually follow the this links, and for the connection, we use uh, Telnet, and we do Telnet to the um, local host. And for example, if we want to go to the R1, again, uh, okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, if we want to go to the serial port of R1, we have to use port 9002 here. Mm, yeah, so I'm trying to connect to the local host. So we're trying to connect to the local host. And the same, the same as the um, in previous example, uh, the same way we accessing the console server right to the R1, and the same way uh, the same way the console is multiplexed across the um, HTML5 uh, UI and the breakout tool. So I hope you got the idea. Uh, the one notice here. So if, for example, you have in your lab some devices which are not using this serial console um, and which are using, for example, graphical user interface. So uh, the breakout tool works the same way. So, for example, we will um, go to the another lab and we will, for example, start the uh, one of the nodes that I just imported, which is the ASXI server. Uh, and as you as you mentioned, so it doesn't have any um, console configuration here. So it's using the um, VNC interface only. And we can actually access the VNC using the breakout tool absolutely the same way as we do for the serial console. Um, for this one, so. I can go back to the old labs and click the refresh. So here we see that another lab uh, just came to the list. And we actually, yeah, so here we have the only one node that, that, that is currently running. And we can access the uh, VNC using port 5900. So of course, you have to have um, some tool to access the VNC um, using the VNC protocol. So in my case, this is the um, Remina, which is the one of the VNC clients for Linux. So let me turn this um, lab on. And after that, I can call the Remina. And I can follow the link, which is VNC for local host on port 5900. And this is, of course, not RTP. So, and probably I should remove this one. And yeah, 
So we can see that uh, the breakout tool works exactly the same way for the VNC consoles as well. Um, in case we um, have any graphical user interface virtual machines in our lab. And the console multiplexed the same way, uh, just it multiplexed uh, with the serial console. Okay, so let me close this one. And uh, the, the last couple of um, demo, I would like to do, denote to the some automation capabilities of the CML. Uh, all right, let me make it half screen again. So inside the tools, we have the API documentation. Uh, actually, no, so let me turn it full screen back again. So, yeah. And this API documentation is really nice formatted using the Swagger format. And here you actually can access the all capabilities of the Cisco modeling labs. And you can do literally everything that you can do uh, using the HTML5 interface. And this is because the CML was developed using the API first model. So basically all actions that you do using the web browser um, are done using the API under the hood. And here you can, um, so it's pretty much of uh, all the information and configuration that you can have. So for example, if we go to the labs, uh, you can see the, um, the all actions that you can do with the labs. Uh, you can create the labs, you can get the information about the, the old labs or any exact lab, uh, you can delete the lab, etc. The same way you can do with notes inside the labs, with the interfaces, links, some uh, internal CML configuration, etc. So, and this Swagger interface is a really good thing because it really helps us to understand how it works. Because, for example, if we want to get, uh, try out the APIs, and for example, we would like to get the information about the labs that we currently have, uh, there is the clear definitions of uh, each API action. Uh, if there are any parameters, so we can actually uh, read the descriptions and the uh, and see the examples of the responses, right? And the the killer feature is we can actually go and try out and execute this API call using the try it button. And for example, we would like to get the information about the labs that we currently have, and we would like to set show all flag to true, and just hit the execute button, right? And here we actually can see the actual API request which we can do um, the same way using the, for example, um, curl instrument. And here is our actual API request. Uh, all necessary flags, uh, the authentication headers, um, and we can actually see the actual response from our uh, CML controller. And we can do with this out pretty much everything that we want. So let's say we can take the uh, the last lab ID and get the more information about this exact lab using the another API call. And we would like to try it out. So the only we need to do is to uh, copy and paste the ID of the lab that we want to get information about and hit execute button. Again, um, the, the actual API request and the response that we have from our CML controller. So we can see the lab is currently started. Uh, the date is created, the, the title of this lab, uh, description, if any, who is the owner of the lab, um, note count, and the link count, and the ID of the lab itself. So I hope you got the idea. So you can do pretty much everything with the API of the CML controller. And um, the very convenient tool 
is to use this API. And this is the SDK uh, library for the Python. And we will try it out just in a second. So here um, in the tools menu, we can actually go and see the client library option. So, and if we will click it, we have the pretty much uh, cool and nice documentation regarding uh, this SDK. As you can mention, uh, it's still, um, the, the, the name is still viral too. Uh, if you don't familiar with the, uh, the predecessor of the CML, it was called Cisco Viral, but the product name was actually uh, changed uh, because it was um, released in early, 2020 so you probably guess why the product name was changed so and um, since we don't have a lot of time um, we will jump right into the examples but the installation of this library is pretty much straightforward so you just have to uh, create your python virtual environment and just install the um, this client the same way you install any other python requirements so here we have some uh, very basic example how we can do um, the automation using the this viral two client library, right? So let me switch back to the the terminal, right? Okay, we can stop the our breakout tool and. To play with this SDK, uh, it's really convenient to use interactive Python interpreter, which is the IPython, actually, IPython. And the IPython is not found for some reason. because it's actually Python, not Python, okay. All right, uh, so what we'll do uh, here, so the first thing we have to connect to the controller and to connect to the controller, uh, first of all, of course, we need to import this. I can actually copy it from the examples. So we import in the um, client library and additionally, I will import the OS library. So here uh, we create the object, which is the client. And here we have a different the address. And for username and password, I will use the environment variables. So which I already configured in a system behind the scenes, of course. Uh, yeah, while to user and um, while to pass. So um, this is to show you that if you're working with some automation, so please never, ever, ever with your credentials from your production environments or your test environments inside the source code. Please use the um, environment variables at least or some more secure um, credential vaults if you have any. And here we also need to put the uh, SSL verify flag to false. Right, okay. Uh, verification disabled, and we actually created the uh, our client object. So uh, here, th there's this the short example how to create a lab with the couple of nodes and link between these nodes. So we can simply copy and paste um, this snippet to our terminal. So we can actually um, check the each object that we are creating. So we uh, created the lab with this ID. Uh, and if we will switch back to the uh, CML dashboard, we can actually notice that this is lab that we actually created in Python. So let's go to this lab. Uh, let me make it a little bit 
yeah so you can see what's happening uh, on the dashboard so next we will uh, create a couple of nodes so here you can see let me make it a bit larger so here we create the r1 and r2 so we use the isv uh, as a reference image platform and we do some uh, initial configurations which is just the host name router one and host name router two so let's copy that and before i uh, hit enter we actually go and we'll switch back all right okay um i hope yeah okay so now now it's better so when i hit enter uh, the api under the hood will instantaneously create this node in the cml all right so we can see that nodes are just created the same way we can actually create the links between these devices so before i hit enter so here we can see that link is created and link is a separate object so you can here notice that uh first of all we create the interface object for each device we created and interfaces are objects by itself independently of the devices so they connect to devices but at the um the python objects they are separate from the devices uh the same as link right and the last one we can actually start the lab using the python script and if we go here once we click the start so you can notice that the little green arrows uh, just appear meaning that our device has just started to boot which we can actually go to the console and see that um so the device is actually booting All right uh, we pretty much hit the time frame um so after the devices are booted, we can actually execute uh, just one more uh, nice code snippet. Um, but for now, while we are waiting, I have a couple of the closing slides. Uh, because this is basically uh, the end of our uh, demonstration. And here are the, some useful links. Uh, first of all, the one where you can actually try, go and try out Cisco Modeling Labs absolutely for free using uh, DevNet Sandbox. You can reserve the lab uh, up to for four hours, I think. And also here's the link uh, for one of the previous uh, IPD week sessions, uh, which Semyon just mentioned in the beginning of the session. And uh, here is the some um, network infrastructure as code uh, with some real examples how CML can be used for infrastructure simulation and the real CI CD automation scenario. And you also can check on my GitHub repo uh, for a couple infrastructure as code projects, which are done using CML, Ansible, and PyATS as well. Uh, I'll just copy all of these links in a couple of seconds. And um, thank you very much uh, for your attention. Uh, I hope this session was interesting and you enjoyed it. So again, thank you so much for your attention and any feedbacks are really appreciated. So please feel free to drop me a line using the email, Facebook or Telegram. Uh, and I will copy and paste my contacts to the chat as well. And with this, um, let me, yeah, give me a couple of seconds to post the the context and Simeon if we do have any questions that we are actually want to answer hey Alexander that was fantastic uh Simeon actually had to leave a little early so oh. it's back to me um but I did have one question that came in a couple of times they were wanting to know if the labs that you had demoed would be available for them uh so if the person who asking can actually um um 
make ask uh, the, the which exact labs the the labs that I used for uh, my own CCNP preparation is that these labs. <laughs> I think I had a um, clarifier. They said the YAML files that the host was using. Oh yeah, yeah. So YAML files. I can. So you can actually drop me a line using the Telegram or email or Facebook, and I can actually send you these labs. So no problem with that. All right. That was one of the only questions that I had. That and everybody wanted all of those uh, links posted in there, which I see you just did that, and of course your contact information. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, in a couple of seconds. There it is. Wonderful. Uh, with that, I actually already opened up the poll, so you guys have about seven minutes remaining for the poll. Please make sure to do that if you have some time. We do read all of your feedback, and I know that the uh, TFE team reads everything, and then I also know that the presenters really enjoy the feedback as well. Alexander, thank you so much. That was phenomenal. I've watched several of your IPD sessions now and helped host with those, and I, I'm always blown away with everything that you do. So wonderful job. Thank you for coming back. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, is there any um, of questions that we need to answer if we have time, of course? Of course, I think most of them have been answered. Uh, I did have one that just came in in chat that said, how to use CML to teach network monitoring. Not sure if you want to tackle that question. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. So I actually um, made one of the sessions on the previous IPD week um, for the streaming telemetry. So it really depends uh, on which network monitoring solutions you want to use uh, to teach students, uh, but you can use the CML uh, or so, so basically you can use the real equipment or the CML. So uh, what you need is some sort of real operating system of the network devices and you can import the, uh, the virtual machine with the some network monitoring capabilities inside the CML or um, you can make it run somewhere outside the CML. And actually, I just I just got the uh, the thing that I forgot to show you guys how to import the um, third party uh, virtual machine inside the CML. So uh, I don't know whether we do have any more time. Uh, I think the the people who actually um, have to go have to leave so they can actually. Uh, probably go and who are interested, I can actually spend a couple more minutes and show how it's easy to import any third party uh, virtual machine inside the CML. Sure, we still have some time, go for it. Yeah, perfect, okay. So um, the, uh, the the very last note about the automation here uh, is the last code snippet. So it's actually, you see the devices are just booted and we can actually go and do some uh, for cycle uh, and we can print out the uh, the interface and some of the interface statistics uh, for these nodes in this lab. And uh, once we hit enter, we can actually see that the nodes are booted. The, um, yeah, I think this is the, the CPU usage of the nodes. Uh, the interfaces and some of the packet statistics. And once we are done, we can actually um, stop the lab, wipe the lab, remove the lab, um, and yeah. So pretty much everything we can do with the power of the API. And uh, all right, so the last uh, uncovered topic is to how to use the um, the import mechanics. So as you can see on the tools, we have some node and image definitions. And so what we have to actually do, so actually here you can see the, uh, the images that are already a part of the standard uh, CML installation, a uh, couple of the images that I imported by myself. So, but what we can do, we can add the node definition, which is the, actually the definition of the virtual machine. And why we will do, or what we will do, we will add the white OS uh, open source router, I believe. So we can actually add, add some description. Third party router. Uh, 
we can choose the nature of this virtual machine. In our case, this is the router. So it really relates to some KVM internal um, templates. And um, yeah, so this is uh, settings related to the user interface. Open source router. The prefix that we will see um, on inside the lab when we will add the nodes. So we will make it iOS dash. We will use the router icon and the actual label. Right? Uh, some parameters um, related to the native Linux simulation. So we need to use the only available KVM driver. And this, this is really, uh, it's recommended to choose a uh, server whenever you import the um, any third party appliance. But so we actually know this is the pretty much the same like iOS V. So we can actually use iOS V simulation driver. Uh, some uh, settings related to the uh, disk simulation. So in our case, we can use the standard rear IO, which is native to the KVM. The amount of memory, uh, which is available to the virtual machine by default in megabytes. Uh, we are okay with the just one CPU and we don't want any CPU limit. So we will leave it at 100%. And the network driver. So I think the VIOS should be okay with the KVM native virtual IO driver. Um, so Windows machines, for example, they don't have the virtual IO drivers by default. So it's better to use um, E1000, which is the simulation for the Intel um, network adapters and the SATA for the disk drivers. But this is related um, in majority to the Windows machines. So the VIOS is the Linux one. So we actually okay with the weird uh, IO drivers. Uh, we don't need any additional uh, data disk. Uh, we do need uh, the boot disk and we can actually give it um, the one gigabit, uh, gigabit of the space. We don't have any uh, VNC output, any graphical user interface, so we can leave it empty. Um, some uh, configurations related to the interfaces. So our um, router did not have any loopback interface, at least which is uh, should be used um, for the configuration provisioning. So we can actually turn it off. The number of the serial ports. So we are okay with just one serial port. The full number of the physical interfaces. So this is how many interfaces um, these appliance will have by default once you drop it uh, inside the lab. So let's, for example, make it four. And here we can actually um, type the naming of these interfaces. So in our case, this is just the Linux appliance, uh, and we will start it with add zero, and we can increment it three more times to have the four. Uh, the boot timeout, uh, meaning the PyATS, uh, sorry, uh, the CML will think uh, after, let's say, 60 seconds, the device is booted in any case. Or you can actually add some uh, boot line, uh, which will indicate that device uh, is booted, the finish the booting process. Um, some internal configuration related to the PyATS. Uh, we don't have the um, PyATS capability for this uh, node that we're trying to import. Um, some configuration related to the inheritance, uh, which we can actually reconfigure some uh, RAM, CPUs, or disk sizes um, per image or per node definition. Uh, config generation, we don't have one here, and we don't have any configuration provisioning uh, for this image. So after this, we can actually hit the create button, and we can see that definition is just created. So now what we can do, we can actually go to the, um, so this was the node definition. So now we can actually uh, import the actual image. So what we do, we go to the image definitions and we hit manage button. And here we have to 
import uh, select the file and import our um, uh, image so which is this one ios 1.3 we click open uh, it is relatively small so it should be uh, uploaded really fast and after it's finished the uploading so it will be available for us and we actually can create the image definition so this is important to understand the different And it looks like we lost you there for a second, Alexander. Image definitions. Yes. There we go. Got you back. Uh, sorry, what? Uh, uh, you, sorry, I, I lost the voice. Oh, okay. Yeah, we lost you for just a second, but it looks like we got you back. No problem. Yeah, I'll, I'll just repeat that. So uh, okay. the one um, node definition um, can be actually mapped to the several um, image definitions. Uh, this is for the same way, like, for example, uh, let me switch back to the dashboard. And um, no, I can actually, I can, I don't actually have uh, this situation where I have multiple images um, tied to the one node definition. But the thing is, like, for example, you have a virtual ASA, right, as a node definition, but you have to, um, so you would like to import the newer version of the ASA. And while you still have the same node definition, which is ASAV, you can have a separate node, uh, no, image definitions like ASA, let's say 9.1, uh, 9.8, et cetera. Okay, I hope you got the idea. So it's finished uploading and we can actually go and create new image definition from this image. Let's say it will be the VIOS EMG. Uh, yeah, you can actually see the browser is helping me because um, I tested it already. So here we're selecting the, our uh, image that we actually uploaded. And here we select the node definition, which we are uh, just created. And here we have uh, the possibility to reconfigure some um, Simulation parameters, we will leave uh, them exactly as we configured them before. Right. And we hit the create the image definition. So it's successfully created. We can go back and check whether we have the node definition here and we have the image definition here. And once uh, we go to the node definition um, you can actually see the available image definition so we have just the one but you have uh, you, you can actually have many of them and if we will go back to the dashboard and we'll um, open back let's say um, our lab that we just imported and when we open the palette back now we can see our um, bios router sitting here right so we'll drop that and we can actually connect it to the uh no we can so what we don't can uh because we don't have any more um <laughs> um any more ports on the r2 uh any free ports to r2 and here and here all right let's make it like uh, two of them and we can actually start them uh we won't really want to make anything uh, inside these devices to just to show you that um, we actually finished the, the import process and they actually can boot and work normally in the, uh, in the CML environment, uh, just like the regular um, Cisco images because they are just KVM compatible. And looks like uh, we have the serial console working, meaning that device is successfully imported. And uh, I think, yeah, so this is the last um, advanced capability that I wanted to show you regarding the CML. So I think uh, we are done this time.
fully with the demo. And if there is any um, questions uh, which are not answered, uh, I would be happy to answer them. Okay, great. Yes, I did have one question that popped up a couple of times that um, asked, can we have the port label shown in the topology? Uh, the port label on the topology, I don't think that there is the capability for this exact interface. Um, yeah, so at least I didn't know that this capability is exist. So probably no. So you, I agree that this is not, uh, might be not convenient, but for now, uh, you can actually see the uh, the connections and the label of the interfaces inside the connectivity tab. Perfect. Okay, and then one last question for you. What's your recommendation on CML2 education setup at the start? Like the number of licenses at the start and cost? Uh, it really depends um, on your setup that you have in your school and the number of people that you're actually planning um, to teach simultaneously. So you actually, as I told you, um, the, um, the educational license, um, so when you pay for the educational license, you essentially you pay for the number of the um, users that are created inside the system, inside the CML at the same time. And these users can really um, um, start unlimited number of nodes, but the number of nodes that you can actually start it is limited by your uh, virtualization infrastructure. So uh, it really depends on how much computational resources you have and whether it's on-premises deployment or um, it's better to use this installation inside the public cloud. So it's a lot of questions arising and it should be uh, really um, tightly designed with the, um, uh, the thing that you already have or you plan to have. And I don't really know about the cost. So as I told you, uh, the educational and enterprise licenses are purchased uh, through the Cisco partner. So depending uh, depending on which discounts they can get for this type of the licenses, uh, so this is what you actually can get uh, in terms of the final price of this um, license. So it's better to um, try to design the, the um, let's say, um, understand how many people you plan to have simultaneously understand uh, which types of labs you're planning to teach. Either it's uh, like small uh, sort of uh, CCNA or this is more advanced CCNP or this is some um, uh, even more advanced uh, CCNP data center because the Nexus switches and iOS XR, they um, require tremendous amount of resources. So depending on uh, which um, number of nodes you will uh, you, you are planning to run simultaneously and which resource requirements of these nodes. So after that, you can actually calculate the um, the top capacity that you are actually need uh, for this installation and understand whether you have uh, this capacity or not. And after, so you have to design your uh, computational cluster and after that go to the Cisco partner and request the quote for the educational license for the CML. Okay, great. I think that's going to wrap it up. I'm pretty sure people could ask questions all day, but <laughs> uh, you <laughs> sure, did a yeah. fantastic job. Thank you so much for joining us again. Um, at this point, I've already saved the poll and I will go ahead and save chat and Q&A and we will wrap this session up for today. Thank you, Alexander, right. again for joining us. My pleasure. So see you next time. See you next time.